Today I'm in Lower North Philadelphia visiting Tufa's Boulder Lounge. Located a couple stops from the central city on a variety of rapid transit lines and just down the street from Temple University. Instead of giving a tour of every angle and amenity in this gym, I'm going to use it as a backdrop for discussing a couple points about their gym design and a couple other points of interest. My experience started with a friendly hello, filling out a waiver, and asking for a day pass. So all pretty normal stuff. But at this point, once it was clear what product I wanted to buy, the front desk attendant pointed me to some papers on the counter and asked me how much I wanted to pay. I've been aware that some gyms, particularly in the States, have adopted pricing models that operate on what Tuvas calls a sliding scale. So depending on your personal financial life, you can decide how much you want to pay for a day pass or a membership or rental gear. But this was my first time experiencing it in person, and I found the experience easy to understand and very matter of fact and non-judgmental. By providing clear price guidelines, as well as helpful suggestions for determining what might be appropriate rates for somebody like me, I could come to a quick and fair decision about how much to pay and I didn't feel pressured one way or another. Tufas provides a lot of insight into their setting philosophy and operations using graphics and posters around the gym, as well as actually on their website too. They use a hybrid grading system where climbs are labeled with both a circuit color and a written V-grade range. I don't have too much of a problem with the redundancy, and I guess they might be in a transitional phase from one system to another. But I didn't find their root tags big enough or bold enough to get all of that information across. In my opinion, climbers should be able to tell the difficulty of a climb with just a quick glance while walking through the main path of the gym. Basically, you shouldn't need to approach a climb or squint your eyes to determine how hard a climb is. These tags were tough to read for a couple reasons. First, the strength of a color-based circuit system is lost when every tag is predominantly white. On top of that, a few of the circuit colors fall into the kind of like pastel category and can be hard to differentiate even when side by side, particularly the green and blue tags at the bottom end of the circuit. And with a tag this small, it's pretty hard to read the V grades on the tag unless you're standing right at the mat's edge. My preference would be to make the entire tag one solid color, with V-grades if necessary, written in white or black. But you should probably take that with a grain of salt, because I only visited once, and maybe I would get used to it after a few more visits. Pick something though, it's almost like not worth making the change. Like once you, once your system Lastly, this gym is a really pure example of designing your walls to keep new climbers under a watchful eye. Notice how the walls closest to the front desk are all slab and vert, and the walls basically just get steeper and steeper as you progress deeper into the gym. Gyms weren't always like this. The boulder walls I started on were designed to be steep and often tried to create some wow factor by putting big overhangs or arches near the front entrance. But that was in a time before bouldering orientations, back when like, drag mats and spotting and cheaper prices for bouldering were the norm. Back when gyms that had no rope climbing at all were a pretty rare breed. 
Nowadays, bouldering is our industry's best-selling product, and we've shaped indoor bouldering to be suitable for the masses. We've dialed back the intensity of the angles, we've bulked up the size and comfort of our holds, and we do more to educate every new customer than ever before. Boulderers aren't born on scrappy roofs over crushed rubber in some back corner anymore. They're born on ergonomic slab climbs, where strength doesn't have to be a roadblock. And as climbers get stronger and smarter, more of this gym will open up to them as they get comfortable with steeper angles. That's not to say that Tufa's only sets easy stuff at the front and hard stuff at the back. Obviously, there's a great mix of difficulty throughout the whole gym. But the slab areas are inherently more friendly for setting easier grades and removing the physical challenge of trying to support so much of your weight on your arms. It's simply easier to cater to those new climbers with more vertical angles. But there are still a whole lot of hard slabs, and a few of the roof climbs are easy-ish. This wall at Tufa's is just a very good example of how we've adapted bouldering for the modern climber. And from what I witnessed, this wall appeared to serve both the customers and the staff of Tufa's very well. Anyway, this is Tufa's Boulder Lounge in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. If you're ever in the area, make sure you stop by.